Now I've got this car on the road, I'm planning a big road trip and what I'm fitting in today's video is gonna be perfect for that. In the last video, we did the first drive and I'm happy to say that that went really well, but the real test is gonna be how this car performs long-term and also on a long distance journey. I'm planning to drive this car over 800 miles, which is a mission in itself. Not forgetting that I've only just got this car running for the first time in the two years that I've owned it. So to make nearly 16 hours worth of driving that little bit more comfortable today, we're fitting cruise control. This car came with a hands-free and audio controls on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, but cruise control clearly wasn't spec as an option. But luckily cruise control was an option on some Mark 7 Fiesta models, so I'm hoping that I can retrofit it to this car. Now I'm not saying that you can retrofit cruise control to all Mark 7 or Mark 7.5, Fiestas. I really don't know what models you could and couldn't spec it as an option for or whether it's an age thing or something like that. Unfortunately, I don't know, but I've been doing some digging on the Facebook pages and I think I know how to tell whether or not it is just going to be plug and play and then a case of enabling the cruise control in the car's ECU. In a lot of cases, optional extras, especially electrical ones, can cost hundreds if not thousands of pounds to spec from the factory. But a lot of the time, it won't cost the manufacturers anything like that. It'll just be a fraction of the cost for them to actually fit them once you select them. This is because a lot of the looms are generic and you'll just add on the parts as you spec the option and then they'll just enable it in the car's computer. A little cheeky, maybe, but it definitely makes it a lot easier if you're trying to retrofit a factory option later down the line. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a black steering wheel trim with the cruise control so we're going to paint up the standard silver one so that it matches the rest of the interior. So I'm removing the buttons which are each held in with three little torque screws and with these removed I can give the panel a good clean because it was pretty grubby. With the trim cleaned I'm just going to scuff the surface lightly with a fine grit sandpaper just to give it a key so the new paint sticks. Then after one more clean with panel prep I'm ready to hit this with the holy trinity, the plastic primer, the gloss black and then finally a clear coat. While that's drying, I can crack on and remove the original. Because I'm going to be removing the airbag, I'm disconnecting the battery. With that disconnected, I can start removing the trims from around the steering column. The top piece just unclips and the bottom section is held on with three torque screws. Now I don't know how accurate this is, but I've heard that this little connector on the left hand side down here is how you tell whether or not your car and the original loom in your car is compatible with cruise control. As you can see here, I've got nine wires. If you've got all nine of those, then it should be compatible with cruise control. Some cars just have seven, and if you do only have the seven, then unfortunately I don't think that is gonna work. I'm only going off what I've read on some posts from people who have done this and had success. I don't know the specifics as to what you need. But if you do happen to know any more details on this, like what those two wires that some looms have, some don't actually are, the colors, the pin numbers, or the details of what those wires are actually for, then please do let me know down in the comments. And then if we can get that information, then I will add it as a pin comment to help people out who are looking to do this as well. Or if there's in fact anything else that you need to be able to retrofit cruise control. Control. But I am hopeful that I'm going to be able to do it on this car once I've fitted those controls along with that new trim. So I guess I better get on and remove the old one. Before I can remove the trim, I need to pop out the airbag and it's released by two spring clips inside. The only way to access these clips is through these little slots in the side of the steering wheel using a long thin screwdriver. As you release them, you want to pull forward from the top two corners of the airbag but just be careful because you don't want to pull too hard and damage any of the wiring inside. You'll be able to feel when both corners have been released and then I found a nice rocking motion from left to right to help me get the airbag out the rest of the way. I'm releasing the yellow airbag connector then disconnecting the two spade terminals and the airbag is free. There's three screws on the back of the steering wheel to release the trim. There's an earth tag to disconnect 
and an electrical connector, and then the trim should just pry off. Now all that's left to do is fit the controls back into the freshly painted trim. Which I think I got a really good finish on, especially for a RAL cam job. Unfortunately, one of the wires off the new loom came with the crimp missing, but luckily that's something I can easily fix. With that done, I can connect everything back up and install the trim into the car. And I can refit the airbag as well. Right, okay, so that's as far as I'm gonna go with refitting everything until I've programmed the cruise control and checked that everything is working. And to do that, I'm gonna need a laptop, I'm gonna need an OBD2 to USB adapter, and I'm also gonna need some programming software. And for this, I'm gonna be using Forescan, which is a free piece of software that you can download from the Forescan website. But do bear in mind that Forescan is a third-party product and it is not affiliated with Ford in any way, so you do use this at your own risk. Jumping into the Forescan site, you can see some information on what Forescan actually is. Primarily, it was a diagnostic tool, but it also works as a programming tool for Ford vehicles, as well as Mazda and some of the American brands. As you scroll down, the homepage shows you some of the main features of the software, as well as some of the supported adapters that you're going to need to connect your laptop or mobile device to your car's OBD2 socket. I'll leave a link to the one that I purchased in the description below. To download Forescan for yourself, scroll back to the top and click on the Products tab at the top of the page. This will take you to a list of downloads available on Forescan, and right at the top here is Forescan for Windows, which I'm going to be using. Click on the link, it'll download, run the installer, the same as you would with a normal computer program. Now, there are other options available for iOS and Android, but I'm not sure on the functionality of some of these other options. So, like I said, I'm going to be using Forescan for Windows. You're also going to need a license. Now, you can buy a one year extended license or you can use a two month free trial like I did. Click on the link and it will take you to a page to submit a form where you'll need to fill in a few details and submit that. And you should get a response within 30 minutes with your license key. But you will need a hardware ID for the program that you've just downloaded. So once you've downloaded Forescan and installed it, you need to go into there and grab your hardware ID to enter into the form to get your free trial for the license. So jumping into the Forescan software, you'll be greeted with this little warning message, just read and OK that. And before we go any further, I'm just going to show you where to find your hardware ID. So if you come over to the left hand side, come to the bottom with this little image of a steering wheel with a question mark on it, click on there and your hardware ID will be available so you can use it to complete that form. It's not here on mine because I already have an active license. Once you've got Forescan downloaded and you've sorted out the license, it's time to connect your laptop to your car. So plug the OBD2 plug into the socket in your car and connect the USB cable to your computer. So back in the software, you want to head back to the main page and hit this icon down on the bottom here, connect to vehicle. A little message will pop up. Now my adapter doesn't have a switch, so I don't need to worry about that. But one thing I do need to do is turn the key to the on position. So do that and then hit OK. You can also OK this next message, which just relates to the board rate. The next pop up will ask you to select your car from a list. Now I've already used Forescan before, so my car is already saved on here. The program is now going to read vehicle info and once this icon on the bottom goes to ready then you're good to go. Now like I said earlier Forescan can read DTCs and display freeze frame data but what we're interested in is the programming so click on this microchip icon and then to program the cruise control we want to go into the central configuration or in brackets main. With that highlighted you want to click on the little play button on the bottom here and that takes us into the central configuration. A warning will pop up asking to turn the ignition off so turn the key to the off position and then hit OK. And now we can see a list of some of the parameters that we can change with Forescan. There are actually three modes to pick from up here. So there's normal, there's engineering one plus all editable and engineering two plus all hidden. We're going to use engineering two because this should give us a full list of all the parameters that we have access to. But I highly recommend you don't go ahead and start editing any of these just randomly or without understanding what they are, what they do or what you're doing when you're editing them. You do have the option to write a backup or save different parameter files in case you want to revert back to previous settings later on, or if you make a mistake, you can restore the factory settings from a backup. But in this video, I'm just going to be programming the cruise control and it's only going to be the one setting that I'm changing. 
So I'm scrolling down the list until I find the parameter for cruise control. And as you can see in the value column, it says without cruise control. To change it, I go to edit selected down in the bottom left hand corner. And there's a few different options on here. There's just cruise control, there's adaptive cruise control and a few other settings as well. But basically this car doesn't have a radar system or anything that can match the speed of the car in front or actually bring you to a complete stop. So we don't want any of that. We just want basic cruise control and that's what I'm gonna go for, which is option two. Click the tick to accept and then the next step is to go down to this bottom bar and hit the right button. It'll pop up with a confirmation screen showing you the old value without cruise control and the new value, cruise control. Once you're happy that that's correct, click the tick and then another message pops up asking you to turn the ignition on. Turn the key to the on position and once that's done, hit the OK button. For scan, we'll now write the configuration to the primary module. Now while it's doing this, you may notice some weird things going on, on the dash, some lights flickering, the needles might sweep, and you might hear some strange noises as well, but don't worry, this is all completely normal. Once it's finished, you'll get this pop-up on the screen to let you know whether or not the programming is successful, then it asks you to cycle the ignition off, then back on, and then hit the OK button. And that is the programming complete. So to back out of the central configuration, we just hit this stop icon down here. And then if we go back to the vehicle information tab at the top, at the bottom of that page, you can disconnect Forescan from your vehicle. And then you can go ahead and close Forescan and disconnect your USB to OBD2 cable. Right, okay, so that's the cruise control enabled. So it's time to go on a test drive and see if it's actually gonna work. And for the test drive, I've actually gone ahead and picked up one of these GoPro thong mounts so I can give you all the good angles while we're out on the road. So let's get this thing on and then we can head off on the test drive. Awesome, right, let's go. Now I'm not sure if I actually wanna wear this thing on my head after I've just used it like Superman would, but never mind. Let's get out and do the test drive and see if the cruise control is working. And I can actually show you now as well, regardless of how ridiculous I look. Biggest problem with head cam is I can't actually see the screen to tell if it's on or recording, but I think that means it is. So let's head out on the test drive. So jumping in the car, don't need to narrate this, you know how to get in and drive a car. But anyway, I need to start now. Oh icon there that is to do with cruise control i don't think that popped up before i don't think anyway but we'll have to see i don't know if that actually comes on when you just start the car for the first time but nevertheless let's head out and see what we can do okay so i'm pretty sure to be able to use cruise control you've got to be above 20 mile an hour but that shouldn't be a problem i'm going to get up to 60 and then just see if it's actually going to work so there's an on button in the center here, which I think you have to press the on button. That doesn't do anything. That doesn't bring anything up on the screen, but I should be able to press the set button. And then you can see the cruise control icon has come on down there. So that's good. And if I take my foot off the accelerator, then we are held at, well, there we go, 55 mile an hour. That's awesome. So it's working. It is working. Oh, one thing I should probably check if it works. So there should be, if I press the brake, yeah, that's deactivated. But then I can resume by pressing that again. I wonder if it'll go back up to the speed I was at. Oh, that wasn't resume, that was just a set again. So let's try and increase the speed. Yeah, there we go. So if I hold the up or the plus set button, then that increases up. And now that's held at 60. Let's try the clutch switch. So if I put the clutch down, yeah, that's gone off as well. Okay, so the resume button is over here by cancel. So if I press resume, that is gonna take me, yeah, back up to what I previously had set. Okay, cool. So that all seems to be working. Then the only other thing I guess I need to check is that when I hold the down button, yeah, that's reducing the speed down nicely. So as far as I can tell then, everything is working with this. So the brake and clutch switches work. So if I touch the clutch to change gear or touch the brake at all, it's gonna disengage the cruise control. But then all I have to do is press resume and then it's back on at what I wanted it to be at before. So that's cool. So that is one thing with a manual car with cruise control. I know some will let you change gear, like some BMWs you can change gear without deactivating the cruise control, but I wasn't expecting that in this car. So, you know, I'm not disappointed about that, but it's just something to know, you know, like if I do go and like drop this down into fourth, for example, then it is gonna 
disengage the cruise control but I mean you just press resume and it'll go back up to what you had it previously set at or you can just set it back to whatever you want because I mean if you're changing gear you're probably going to be wanting to change road speed anyway so that is you know up to you however you want to reactivate it say a new speed or you know resume what you're at before but anyway it seems to be working and it's working really well so I'm really happy about that and then there's an off button here which again will deactivate it but that just means once that's off you can't then set it until you turn it back on but that is all working perfectly so I'm super happy there's not much more I can really show you with that that is the cruise control and it's working that's how you sort of use the control interface as well so I suppose I'm just gonna head back and wrap this video up because it's working and I'm super happy that I've managed to do it. Awesome. I'll catch up with you when I'm back at home. So there we go. That is cruise control fitted, programmed, and most importantly, working, which is awesome. I'm so glad that I was able to do that, to retrofit cruise control to a car that didn't have it when it was specced from new. So I'm super happy with that. And it wasn't too expensive either. The controls came in at about 60 pound from eBay with the trim, uh, the little USB adapter for the laptop, I think it was about 30 quid. And then the software is free and the license for two months is a free trial. So that is you know all in for 90 pound. I think that is pretty damn good for cruise control retrofitted to this car. And it's gonna come in really handy for a trip I've got planned that's coming up, like I said earlier in the video, which is gonna be over 800 miles worth of driving. So that is gonna come in really, handy just how useful it's actually going to be round and about where i live i'm not too sure yet because like i said in the first drive video the gearing on this car is really short so every time i'm pressing that clutch in to change gear then it is going to deactivate the cruise control but on those longer journeys it's certainly going to come in useful but that only goes for the one liter ecoboost engine and in particular the 140 horsepower version which i've got in this car because this actually has different ratios in the gearbox compared to the 125 and the 100 horsepower versions that you can get for the one liter ecoboost engine and as well as that this should work for any mark 7 fiesta as long as you've got those nine wires as opposed to the seven that i showed you underneath the steering column earlier in the video so you should be able to use this on your sts or on you know any other engine that comes in a mark 7 fiesta if you didn't have cruise control fitted from the factory but you want to retrofit it then look out for those wires and hopefully you should be able to have success like i have in retrofitting it to your car that being said if you have found this video useful then please give it a thumbs up and consider leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already but that is going to do it for this video so as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video